Hi, this is AJ. Today we're going to have a boxing story. You might think AJ has been working out with these weights. Well, AJ has not touched any serious equipment for about half a year, but my grandson has, and I'm going to put a message down below that will direct you to his channel on how to exercise correctly. But right now I'm going to talk to you about a disputed story in boxing history. Most of you have heard of the great champions, heavyweight champions such as uh, Jack Johnson, John L. Sullivan, uh, Max Baer, Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Sonny Liston, and so on. But there's another man who held this title that I'll bet most of you have never heard of, and that is Marvin Hart. And one reason you haven't heard about him is although he is listed as a lineal heavyweight champion, there's some question about the reliability of the match that determined his getting that championship bout in the first place and then his career after he won the title. <clears throat> Let's go back to 1905. Early in the year, James J. Jeffries heavyweight champion of the world, retired. And with no sanctioning organization available, the first will not appear until 1921. That will be the NBA, today it's the WBA. And that organization sanctioned about between George Carpentier and Jack Dempsey, which of course Dempsey won. But back in 1905, there is no organization. So it was up to newspapers and magazines like Police Gazette, New York Times to make a decision and also uh, just general popularity of fighters uh, where they could be so well regarded that popular opinion uh, elevated them to a championship. Well everybody agreed Jeffries was the champion but Jeffries retired. Two promoters in Nevada and one named Livingston, the other named Egan, decided to hold about between two fairly legitimate contenders. They were Jack Root and Marvin Hart to determine the successor to James J. Jeffrey's crown. And well, here's where the controversy comes in. Who were these people in the first place to say, here is the, here are the two people reliable enough to uh, fight for the, the vacant championship. And were Jack Root and Marvin Hart really reliable contenders in the first place? Well, E.G. is going to maintain that, yeah, it was legitimate. And because Marvin Hart, just weeks before, had beaten Jack Johnson. Now, there's some question about the legitimacy of his victory, but Adam Pollock, who's written the definitive book on this subject, and I recommend you read his In the Ring series, uh, Adam Pollock maintains that the referee, who is also the judge, saw a more aggressive Marvin Hart, a more lackadaisical and clinching Jack Johnson, and he awarded the decision to Marvin Hart. So that there qualifies Marvin Hart. Also, he was... Uh, mostly undefeated in his career up to that point, having lost only to George Gardner, and uh, George Gardner highly regarded what we'd call today light heavyweight. And as far as Jack Root goes, uh, his record was pretty sterling. He had, yes, been beaten by George Gardner, as had Marvin Hart, but he avenged those two victories. Well, other people who could have been thrown into this mix would have been George Gardner would have been Jack Johnson, let him uh, get in the mix. Uh, maybe uh, Bob Fitzsimmons, a uh, former champion, and there were some others. But these were the two men who got in the ring. Jack Root, Marvin Hart. Here's how the fight went down. First round, they felled each other out, as often happens in boxing matches. Rounds two through seven were all Jack Root. In fact, at the end of round seven, Marvin Hart was so badly hurt that uh, had the bell not rung, he would have been out. 
uh, his corner claimed a foul. Uh, the referee, who oddly enough was James J. Jeffries, the recently retired heavyweight champion. Uh, the referee, Jeffries, said no, it wasn't a foul. Now we begin round eight. It's all Marvin Hart now. It turns out that Ruth had punched himself out. Continues on through round 11. It looks like at the end of round 11, Jack Rudd is done. But he's able to get into round 12. He is hit so hard by Marvin Hart that the punch was heard all over the uh, stadium. And uh, it took several minutes, three to four, depending on who you read, uh, for him to uh, wake up. So Marvin Hart is now the heavyweight champion of the world. The New York Times is not particularly happy about it. Neither is the Salt Lake City Tribune. Uh, other observers, such as George Seiler, the columnist, felt that um, neither of these two should have been the only people to fight for the title. Uh, John L. Sullivan said that uh, he considered this not a heavyweight title bout, but everybody agrees that Marvin Hart did win. So even today, there's controversy about whether Marvin Hart should be considered among the lineal heavyweight champions. And the argument is further, uh, it's compounded by the fact that Marvin Hart subsequently, a few weeks later, is going to lose the title to Tommy Burns, who will go on and lose the his title to Jack Johnson. And the other fights that Marvin Hart engages in, uh, there is going to be mostly losses. His last loss will be against a man who had three professional fights, and that's all. Marvin Hart's going to retire. He's going to his home in Kentucky. He's going to open up a tavern, as many ex-fighters do. Uh, he'll die relatively young in 1931. Max Schmeling will be heavyweight champion at that time, and will subsequently be pretty well forgotten. But. For you who are interested in boxing, I'd like you to take a look at uh, Pollock's book. Uh, Marvin Hart, I think, deserves to be in among the heavyweight champions of the world, lineal heavyweights. You may disagree. Let me know what you think. Put your comments below. Do give these videos some publicity. Send them to your friends. Post them elsewhere. That will prompt me to put more up. And uh, hit the like button. That's it. Thank you much.